Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us again for another We're Not Really Here. And that is ahead of our three o'clock on a Saturday kickoff against Southampton. Now, City have won their last 11 away Premier League matches that kick off at three o'clock on a Saturday. What a start to start your day. (laughs) <laughs> and you know Kyle's loving that stat so thank you so much we have absolutely blown our year's budget today on our guests that are on the sofa and joining myself Natalie Pavlek we have Kyle Walker returns we have my hero Sean Gota here and making his debut it is former goalkeeper part-time striker it is David James <laughs> welcome David how are you feeling about being here fantastic Really, really good to be back. I've, um, unfortunately, obviously because of lockdown, I haven't been able to go to the, to the museum and visit some old memories. But um, yeah, wonderful to be back and wonderful to be here on a show with such a, an exciting game coming up. It's, uh, it's funny that you, you mentioned that. We will be talking about the museum and what is in there because we can actually show that memory that you're talking about just there. This was when you, you donned the number one shirt in an outfield position. And you went up front in that game, the final day of the season against Middlesbrough. And I mean, it's still a memory for all Manchester City fans. What do you make of it, David James? Because you're obviously... Did you know it was going to happen? <laughs> He's trying to get involved. Oh, hang on a minute. This, is, this, this comes back to me. Oh, that was a touch. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I think about that so often. And if it had been a little bit cuter, I could have curled it in the top right-hand corner. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know I was going to play till pretty much half-time. And that was Chappie, the, uh, the kit man. Oh, definite penalty. <gasps> Definitely. Thought he would have got across at near post. Oh, love that appeal there. That's a that's a throwback to strikers, you know. When you see a striker, he's got his fingers plastered. <laughs> that means he's about business, eh? And uh, obviously for this game, we were looking to secure a place in, as it was known then, the UEFA Cup. And that penalty miss. With the team just thinking, just going to launch the ball up, we've got David James up there. How tall are you, uh, David? How, how t- I'm six foot three, so I think that, you know, I, I always thought I'd do a job up top, but when we chuck you up there, you must be, what, six five, six six, easy? Six five. wow. I, well, put it this way, no one told me what to do. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was given the number one outfield shirt, went up front, and kind of just made up as I went along. Oh, we saw that. Yeah. <laughs> right, we've, we've got a striker right here yeah. in Sean Gilton. We need thought of a you score out of 10. Out of 10. Well, I'll tell you what, the technique to go for that, that volley, I thought was a nine. But to not make contact, <laughs> I, I have to give you There was contact a, with my back foot. There was contact with the wrong foot. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> love it, though. Love the effort. Uh, Addison before Addison, eh? I mean, yeah. I mean, there we are. We do have a keeper yes, that everyone talks about being able to play outfield, but we've actually got a keeper here who did that. I mean, it does, it, it lives very long in the memory of Manchester City fans, uh, Natalie, and everyone that is watching. I'm sure you guys remember that day as well. But David, for, for you, you can always say you played out, outfield. Did you like your experience of doing it? You said that it felt like a long time when you were playing out there. It did. I think it was six minutes. I think it was six minutes. It felt like 20. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, in my head, it was like, yeah, it must have been about 70 odd minutes when I came, uh, when the substitution was made. But yeah, I loved it. Um, frustratingly, when I, I can remember back on the day, it was like when the final whistle went, it was like, we haven't won. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I've just played up front for, for Man City in the Premier League. It was like, we haven't won. And we had a chance with a penalty. Um, but looking back at it, it's still the only number one outfield shirt in Premier League history. So I'm buzzing. That's a brilliant. You know, and I, I donated it to the to the museum. So uh. that's amazing. I was actually at that game as well, and I remember like everybody that was sat around me. We were like, "What? What? <laughs> what's go- what's going on?" Oh, we shared what's on the field. On? Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then we were like, "Okay, yeah, no, okay. Let's why 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 not?" Um, and it is when we think about it now, it is so city. It is taking the England goalkeeper and putting him up front is so Manchester <laughs> City. And I saw an interview with Stuart Pearce a few years ago. He talked about it and he was talking about how the night before he was sat at home. I, I guess you've read this. He's told you about this. And he just was thinking, how are we going to win the game? And he came to him and he just thought, well, we could try David James up front. <laughs> A phone call would have been appreciated yeah. at, at that moment. <laughs> That's outside the box thinking that. Um, mm. We're not even mentioned. Nice. I, nice. Yeah, nice. It's outside the box thinking. And no mention about the striker being on the bench because if I'm sat on the bench, I'm thinking, if you're John Mackin. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, are you serious? I, mean, I didn't want to bring that up, but there, there was a striker on the bench in John Mackin. Did, did you ever speak to him after that game and think? Oh, I'm not sure what happened to John after that. I mean, it wasn't just a striker on a bench. This is the guy who scored in the derby. Yeah. That mm. is very true. <laughs> I, I must have done something really good in training that week. I don't know what it was. But I mean, uh, I mean <laughs> Nicky Weaver was also on, on the, the bench, wasn't he? And, and there was a substitute that happened where he came on and he said, oh, you, you're coming on, but David James is, is staying on. on and it's, uh, he, For him, that must have been crazy as well for another keeper to watch another keeper go up front. Did you ever speak to, to Nicky Weaver about it? or it's, it's a, The conversation's never been had. I mean, I, wow. I, I haven't spoken to Nicky about it. I mean, if he didn't know about it, I didn't know about it. Wow. John Macken obviously didn't know about it, but uh, <laughs> Stuart had a master plan. Yeah. If Robbie I... scores the penalty... Yes, it, it becomes works. the best decision yes. in management. Well, not necessarily the best decision, but one what, of the yeah? greatest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so close. Wow. It's still incredible. It is. It is. I mean, we have a laugh and a joke about this, but I couldn't imagine me going and go because I would have to just put my hands and say, I'm sorry. Uh, we had to play without a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just didn't have this laugh, you know, in terms of, you know, watching him up top, uh, you know, you know, having a go. Um, chopping on a few players, but I could never go and go. I could never I guess go and go. We've seen Kyle Walker do it this mm -hmm. this season, last season it was, wasn't it? Last season. So yeah, and he faced that free kick where he uh, he looked very nervous. And my my favourite memory of that whole experience watching him go in goal was Benjamin Mendy screaming at him to drop to the floor and yes. to waste yes. a waste yes. a bit of time. Just get to the floor. Waste Ten some minutes time. later, yeah. he's gone. <laughs> That dropped to the yeah. floor. <laughs> right, well, we do have the team news, so let's have a little look now. And I'm going to presume that Edison's in goal, but who knows? <laughs> no, Stuart Pearce is not in charge. So um, our team for today, the starting 11 in goal is Edison. We then have Walker, Diaz, Stones and Cancelo. And then in midfield, which is the rest of them, we have Rodrigo, Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, who's the captain. We have Bernardo Silva, Torres and Raheem Sterling. So that is our starting 11 for today. Kyle, instant thoughts. I mean, looking at that, I'm going to throw it straight to Sean. No Sergio Aguero, no Gabriel Jesus. We're seeing that front three of Raheem Sterling, Bernardo Silva and Ferran Torres. I mean, there's still goals in it, so there's still lots to be positive about, but there's no out and out striker up there. Yes, and I'm just going to chest that over to... No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen... City's got quality, you know, and, and yes, we'd, we'd love for Sergio Aguero to be, to be starting on the bench. Uh, we love Jesus to be scoring goals and, and up there as well. But this is the squad that, that, Sir, uh, that Pep is going with. And, and in this team, there are goals. Torres, when he's played up front, for me, makes a, a lot of the right decision. Looks like a striker. So I, I imagine it'll be Torres that'll be up the, up the middle. Sterling will be coming in off the wide flanks. And I think it may be Bernardo Silva that'll come in uh, from off the right-hand side. So I think that interchanging you see at times it all being a striker role. But I'm, I'm quite happy with that team because I, I think there's goals in there and there's a lot of creativity. I mean, if Liverpool can score seven, I think it is now, uh, then we can get eight or nine, David. Uh, I mean, these goals that are obviously happening in the Premier League today, Ferran Torres, Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, when you've got Kevin De Bruyne behind them, he puts them on a plate for them. We hopefully shall see some goals today. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, uh, Ferran Torres is my, dare I say, my favourite at the moment. There's something about him which I love. 20 years old, this guy has got everything. All he needs is, I mean, obviously now he's scored his Premier League goal this season. What he needs is what he's been doing in the Champions League, that game where the shots are on target, going to the back of the net, hat-tricks. He is exciting, very, very exciting. When Sterling, again, if he can start adding a few more goals to his game, but yeah, your lineup or your lineup, our lineup. Is fantastic. It is indeed. Let's have a look at the substitutes as well. We've got Scott Carson, Nathan Ake, Alexander Zinchenko, Benjamin Mendy, Fernandinho, Riyad Mahrez, Phil Foden, Felix Nemecha, and Sergio Aguero. Sean, I mean, when you've got Sergio that can come off the bench, it's such a privilege for Manchester City, isn't it? When you've got a striker of that calibre, and after 45 minutes at half time or after 50, 60 minutes, you can just throw him on the field. Yes, and, and clearly I'm not Pep Guardiola, but if I was Pep Guardiola, I'm saying, as soon as the game starts, Sergio will warm up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, Sergio, Sergio Grow, we know what he's about. Uh, the other day, he came on, was if, uh, not the last game, but the previous game, his first game back from injury. He comes on, it's like 15 minutes left, and he, he scores a goal. This is what Sergio does, and we know that he's capable of doing this. So I hope that, 
he plays some part today. He comes on, and I hope he's got a good 30 minutes uh, because if he's got a good 30 minutes, we're, we're able to create two or three chances, and we know that with Sergio, he takes those opportunities. But a really good bench. Felix Dementia, another young kid. Remember seeing him in around the, the academy? Uh, I always used to have a little, little bit of a joke with him and his, his, his older brother, Lucas. Quality player. So it um, be really good to see him get, get a, a couple of minutes as well. I like that. The personality stamp of Sean Gota, that goes a long way for me. Um, Sergio Aguero as well has an incredible record against Southampton as, as well. He scored loads of goals against them and we can see some of them now, Sean. Did, uh, we, I think I've asked you before about having a particular club that you come up against and you just think, yeah, I'll score against these. I fancy it. Did you have one? I did. Uh, yeah, I, everyone knows it was Burnley, it was, you know, Man United as well. From Sergio Aguero, I think there's every club. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, you know, Question to you, James. If you're facing Sergio Aguero, what advice are you giving the defenders? Like, are you saying, like, you know, don't don't let him shoot? Don't. What are, what are you saying, like, as a goalkeeper to to defenders? Well, as Carl said, I mean, you got a you got a player who can score, and I think that little montage that we're seeing now just illustrates what kind of goals he can score and what positions he gets in to score those goals. So it'd be very difficult to to say do this and stop him because he wouldn't be the player that he is if it was that easy. Um, everything he's got and i just hope that i'd had a i would have a good game if i was playing against him yeah i mean when you when you're looking at him and when you're actually looking at a, a player of that caliber he's he's got so many incredible memories at manchester city but just as a striker let's try and take my bias off and pretend i'm not wearing a manchester city shirt right now <laughs> yeah, he is he too. is one of the best strikers <laughs> that the premier league's ever seen and david you, you've come up against some world-class strikers where do you think sergio rates in that kind of all the strikers that you've played against and ones you've seen over the years as i say it's just the top strikers score all types of goals i mean certain strikers will score you know uh, tap-ins and whatever. I mean, he can do everything. Sean, that's what Sean, Sean did. Sean. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I could tell you, if I scored outside the box, I got a nosebleed. I probably scored <laughs> maybe two two or three in my career. Sergio Gro scores screamers outside the box. He's getting the had as far post. He's getting the near post. He's getting the acute angles. I mean, you're, you're almost like, you know, you can't see the goal. How has he scored? Mm -hmm. This is the he, he scores every type of goal. I mean, he scored seven goals against Southampton in the last six games, where we scored 15 in total. Um, so, I mean, he's got an incredible record. There's also another big game, of course, um, that we had against Southampton. Uh, you, you probably recall, everybody at home will certainly recall, back in 2018, when we won at Southampton to get the 100 points. And we're going to see that. Yes. Oh. So, Gabriel Jesus, of course, scoring that day. That was, I mean, a brilliant finish, first of all, with the pressure of what that meant, Sean. Yes, I mean, the run, I'm trying to think, you know what, no one sort of remembers sort of who passed that ball. I'm going to sit there and assume it was De Bruyne, or, or, but what a pass. Again, it's just over, Jesus, right place, and, and the situation tells him he has to love the keeper. Where the keeper is, you know, he comes out off his line, which is right thinking, can I go and intercept? He has the good touch, and he just loves it. I mean, it's 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 a, a brilliant goal, and you can tell by the joy of the the staff. You know, uh, they're all running. You know, they're just joyous. It was De Bruyne who who played that ball right there over the top. And I'll tell you a little about this. I was watching this with all my friends in the pub when we were allowed to do that all those years ago, and I literally had said, "Oh." Typical city. We're not, we're not going to get the 100 points. I literally had said that, and that ball got played over the top, and my cousin grabbed my arm, and then they scored that goal, and what a moment it was. And, David, look look at Pep Guardiola there. I mean, you've got a man who just scored that goal, and then he goes straight back to... You see him animated, you see him on the touchline, and then he said, no, get back in position, we go again. And that sums him up, really, isn't it? He always wants perfection, he always wants more. He's an amazing manager. I mean, I, I, I love, and I'd be interested to see his pre-match, talk because I like listening to him talking about what he's going to do and even after the game breaking down what they did um, it, to work with him or work underneath him must be a privilege for any player so you know amazing oh <laughs> I mean, I'm excited <laughs> Yeah, so a great record that we have against Southampton and, and hopefully that's going to help us today because obviously we've had two draws in our last two games, Sean. So let's um, try and stay nice and positive and upbeat, but let's have a little talk about the West Brom game. What was your kind of initial feeling at full time when obviously the game f finished a draw? Well, I'm always upbeat, but in terms of that particular game, for me, 
I felt that we, we, we should have probably taken it more to them uh, in terms of the, uh, I think we had two defensive midfielders in that particular game. Um, the, and that restricted us in terms of uh, bodies going forward. Full backs were not really bombing on. Um, so that, I, I think it was almost like it's, it's not, it was not a city performance. And I think it was more cautious. And I think that, you know, Pat probably had in his mind, you know, we, we, we keep it solid, keep that base, and then we're going to create several chances and then put away two or three. Uh, but it just ended up being uh, a really tight game. And, and, and we're seeing that this has been the case this season. Now, we've seen this so many times, getting to that kind of byline and, and so close to the goal and putting it across. And we get that goal, and then you, you see that, Manchester City, you think we're going to score more, we're going to get more, and then this happens right here. And David, as a goalkeeper, how annoying is it when you're going one way and then a deflection takes the ball in a different direction and you just can't get down to it? Yeah, uh, absolutely no chance. I mean, the thing is, you, you don't know where the ball is going to go. If you see the guy shoot, then you, you, know, you see it so often that the goalkeeper... I mean, these two saves, I have to mention, these two saves by Johnston... Um, from what you're saying, Sean, and I, having been at the Man City versus West Ham game at the uh, London Stadium, two one all draws with slightly different finishes. I know it's all the ifs and buts, but the chances were created to win the game. Now, if one of these goes in and you've got to thank the goalkeeper for two fantastic saves, then this conversation is completely different. And it wasn't that Man City were doing things wrong. If anything, they were slow to get to the point that the saves had to be made at the end of the game. And the same thing happened at West Ham. And the frustration as a City fan is... It, I was doing it for Manchester uh, radio, so I was a, a Man City fan at West Ham, which is obviously <laughs> one of my old teams. Not, yeah. that was, not that I'm a turncoat, but it was I was there for a reason. But um, the frustration watching it was, you can win this game. Now, going back to Edison, a deflection beats him for a one-all draw, and Antonio scores one of the best overhead kicks until last week, till Haller did a better yeah, one. Yeah, did the same. <laughs> yeah, um, and ends up on the drawing side again so it's kind of like Man City is so close to being that 100 points per season side again it's frustrating but on a positive only needs the uh, yeah he only needs that little little change and then you go and win threes and fours. So, Sean, what do City need to do then? Because we're creating the chances. We saw at the end of that game, there was two brilliant opportunities, two great saves as well. But they're just not going in. And it does feel like a little bit, it, it, it is frustrating. We're seeing them going out there uh, at Southampton today. Uh, and you just good. think, uh, you just think, what can they do today to ensure that they are converting all of these chances? Well, for starters, continue to create those chances. I mm -hmm. think that when we'll look, we'll, we'll look and we'll say, yes, uh, we'll, we, we shouldn't just be relying on, on Sterling to, to, to be scoring. I think when we had the season 100 points and all those rackets, you know, we had midfielders that were scoring 10 plus goals. So I think we're needing everyone to chip in. So when I, I, I recall looking at, you know, fixtures and thinking, you know, we had five different goal scorers or three different goal scorers. So I think it isn't just about Jesus not scoring, you know, he's not playing. I think it's about everybody contributing. So, well, there's Bernardo Silva, him getting on the score sheet today. Um, Torres getting on the score sheet today. I think it's about that. But I think, yes, continue to create the chances and I think the, goal, the goals will come. Yeah, and when you're talking about creating chances, we were seeing pictures there of Kevin De Bruyne, obviously one of, if not the best midfielder in the world. And this week he was named in the FIFA Best 11. That's the name, isn't it, Kyle? It's the worst name ever for an award, but we're proud of him. Yeah, there's multiple names. I've got FIFA, FIFA Pro, Men's World 11. Uh, he was named in that. And let's just talk about him a little bit because I feel like we wax lyrical about him all the time. This and is the segment. It's <laughs> rightly, it's deserved. And David, when you're looking at a player like Kevin De Bruyne, it must be a striker's dream and a goalkeeper's nightmare because he can do it all, it seems. When you think he's going to play a pass, he'll have a shot that fizzes into the top corner most of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were to play up against him, how do you stop a player like that? Well, I, I was buzzing off him when he was at Wolfsburg. Um, not because, well, obviously, his attacking... Um, his, his, his attacking ability is amazing, what with, you say, assists or shooting. But it was his defensive mentality. This is a guy who would missed, in one example, missed a shot and then would run back and tackle someone in his own box. And when you've got a player who's committed at both ends of the field, which he still is for Man City, then you're basically adding a defender and a midfielder and a forward 
to your lineup. So incredible, and he thoroughly deserves to be in that team. So, however you pronounce it, or whatever the uh, whatever the full name Just of the, the title best. is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I like that, Sean. Yes, yeah, so he made the eleven. He made the team. Uh, but one member of Manchester City's team that won the award for the best player in the world is Lucy bronze and wow we are unbelievably proud and so so thrilled for her so our right back is the best women's player in the world she's also the first english person to have won the award um and we we're just so unbelievably thrilled for her. david i know you're a big you're a big fan of lucy bronze oh lucy bronze she's a legend absolute legend i mean i've I've followed women's football not as closely as I have done in the past, but Lucy Bronze is the one player when she's played for England, when she's played for Man City, she is the best and she deserves that award uh, entirely. And when you think that she was playing for the best women's team in the world in Lyon before, to come to Man City, to be voted as a Man City English player in English football, it just shows you where the women's game in England's going. Definitely does. Uh, and Sean, I think the, the most exciting thing about being presented with this is it's actually voted for by fellow professionals. Mm. So it's like the, the people that she plays with, they recognise just what a talent she is and she's the best in the world. You said it right there, the best. Listen, Lucy, look. Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the best, that's what you deserve. And, you know, Again, fullback, she's that modern day fullback, bombs up, getting involved in goals. Uh, and when you're voted by your peers, it's, it, that's the best you, you could ever get. You know, when your peers are saying, we vote you as the best. And mm -hmm. this is absolutely awesome. Um, uh, this is, this, I, I'm thinking, when I see, we're talking about Lucy, but people that come to mind, I'm thinking, Maradona, Messi. And uh, this is Lucy. This is, this is what's coming to mind. Well done. I, 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 this is this is just absolutely awesome. The we're going to clip that up for her, and we're going to send it to her so she can watch that. Well, she she deserves yes. it. She deserves it. all the hard work she's putting in, and keep it going. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Keep overlapping, getting inside. Do, just keep doing it. I'm going to keep gassing you up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that there. Congratulations to Lucy for that award and to Kevin for being included in the uh, in the uh, FIFA Pro, FIFA <laughs> Pro World 11 right there. Incredible. And David, it does just kind of set the, the, the standard for Manchester City. We've seen that our players are being recognised and it, it's a great journey that we've been on. And you see the likes of the, the names that they're coming up against or with included in those 11s. And Manchester City, that they're right deserve that position because we are growing to be one of the biggest and best clubs in the world and we've got the best players in the world as as you said Sean <laughs> right there what a position it is for this club it is I mean uh, we are sort of going back to those clips of me playing up front it was a slightly slightly different club then but um yeah the development has been staggering uh in a positive way um you know they were last season obviously with Liverpool winning the, the title it was because of an exceptional performance and that's the only way that Man City seemed not to be able to win is other teams or one team in particular having an exceptional season so what we want to see as I say is these one all draws turning into one nil wins two one wins preferably five nil wins to keep Sean happy yes and uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah and then there's an opportunity again to be challenging for titles because as you say got the players in the women's game and the men's game to uh, to win things and and keep this keep this club proud and the city proud. Oh, I like yes. that. I like that. Yes. That's brilliant. There, again, just just about Lucy Brown. I think it's right to give mention to Nick uh, Kuzak and uh, Gareth Taylor because these are the coaches that that obviously had had her and evolved her and improved and developed. And you know she's gone on and done all what she's done. So you know it's from the coaching side. You know, well done to them as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's testament to what the club put into women's mm -hmm. football as well. You know, um, you know, a good few years ago now, the, the the with the facilities, with the the professional contracts, with the coaching and everything. So yes, absolutely, Sean. Now we are hearing that the Liverpool game has finished and um, they have won seven nil today. Now. When that comes into my head, obviously, first of all, I go, uh, but then second, I go, ah, ha, ha, but hold on. Last week, they drew a Fulham. Okay. So, yeah, I like you thinking. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm with David when he said we're really close to, to getting, going from those one alls to two twos and threes. So I'm taking that as a positive, Sean. Uh, we, if they can do it, we can do it. Of course. And right now, again, I think with the squad that we've got, the team that's going out there today, I just feel absolutely positive about 
about what's going on. Uh, Stones is, is back. I, I keep I keep gassing him up because I think what he's done in the last month or so, being back in the team. Uh, Love John Stones. Yeah. He's, he's, and I, because I, I was one of those that was saying, come on, Stones, a mistake, son. And, but I'm really loving what I'm seeing with him. You know, each game that he plays, and I hope I'm not sort of going ahead, but yeah, he's been, he's been playing really good and deserve it of consistently playing. Now, there's, there's one team that are trying to stop us uh, getting those goals. It is Southampton today. And you've got the likes of Theo Walcott, Danny Ings, Che Adams. Those three are starting, as well as the, the free kick master, James Ward-Prowse, right there. Some are saying that he's better than David Beckham. Not sure I'd go that far, but he definitely knows how to hit the top bins. David, you know all about a, a rivalry with Southampton from your time at Portsmouth. This season especially, the, this is a team that they're currently sitting third in the Premier League. They look good. They look really special this season. Oh, you think so? Oh, oh, oh the rivalry's okay. still there. Um, and th th this is nothing to do with rivalry. And James Royal Prowse, interestingly, is a Portsmouth fan. Um, yeah, that's why I love him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the one thing about Southampton, which is really, it's, I, I, I've been watching this season and I'm looking at them and Manchester United, and I didn't want to say that name on this show, but I'm saying it for the right reasons. They were scared in that second half against Manchester United. Now, for a side who's in third place to be playing so scared surprised me. So when they played Arsenal, again, it was, there was this fear about them. And this is where the, when I look at Man City, if they go for this game from the beginning, show their dominance, there is an opportunity, I'm not going to say seven goals, but there's an opportunity for Manchester City to score a lot of goals against a side who I think could buckle. Now, if Man City go in there with respect and take it easy and slow, 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 then you get the, the likes of Southampton's players like James Ward-Prowse, Theo Walcott, who can then take the initiative, which is what we don't want. We want yeah. South, I, I don't think I ever lost at Southampton. Oh, I like that one. Throw did that I, in there. Lose, maybe once, many, many, many years ago, before I was a centre forward, but it was, it was never, never at St Mary's. So it was one of those places I like to go to. So as I say, it's an opportunity for Man City to go in, literally take a grip of the game. You don't have to score sevens. And this is, I think, where Man City fans have been spoiled in the past, where fives and sixes became normal. You know, three points is only one goal difference. And is it, if it's a convincing one nil win, that would do. I mean, absolutely. Last season, we scored more goals than Liverpool, but we conceded a lot more than them as, yeah. as, as well. So absolutely. But I'm, I'm really interested in what you were saying there. I'm kind of um, thinking then, are Southampton, obviously third in the league just now, are they a really good team this year or is the league just so messed up at the minute? Well, actually, if you look at the top five, I think it's probably uh, uh, very abnormal. But I mean, they deserve to be there because they've got the points and you can't take that away from them. But I just, I'd look at them and I, I feel they are f they're a bit fragile. Um, and when, as I say, you look at the Manchester United game, even, I mean, Arsenal's probably the two most fragile sides in the Premier League. And you're just thinking, if you go at these, they're going to break. You know, and I, I like James Ward-Prowse. I like Danny Ings. I think these players have got ability. But at the same time, it just seems to be working at the moment rather than uh, uh, Hootelhow. Hootelhow? Ralph Hassan Hootel. Hassan Hootel. There we go. The governor. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. The say governor. that three times. <laughs> well, the, the governor of The Walking Dead, for anyone who's uh, wondering where <laughs> that comes from, he was good at killing zombies. So uh, anyone with life in them, he struggles. He's definitely come back from the dead uh, as well. Yes. The 9 1 oh. loss uh, uh, oh, yes. to, to Leicester. He's definitely come back from that. Sean, I want to quickly touch on Danny Ings right there. We can see him warming up. He's getting ready. I mean, he is a striker that has certainly found form, especially last season. He knows how to find the back of the net. Yeah. Uh, and you watching him, you must be thinking, OK, this guy's got something. Yes, but you just look at his whole body language in the warm-up. He's got swag. He's even chewing gum like, I'm ready for today. I got confidence. And people say, what do you mean chewing gum? Like, I mean, he's, you can see he's just got confidence about today. Now, we have to be spot on. I feel confident with our defense to keep him, keep him quiet. But Danny Ings is confident at this moment. He's leading the line. He's one of those players, if he finds a little half a yard of space, with the confidence he's got, he doesn't need three or four chances. He's, he's one that needs one or two, and he takes them. So we've got to keep him quiet. Quiet. Very mobile player. Uh, I like him because he's one that sort of sits on his shoulder. Uh, again, in little tight, tight spaces, uh, he's, he's, he's a very good player. So 
uh, one to definitely watch, but to also keep quiet. Yeah, and I've got a, a stat, another stat as well. You know I love my stats, Sean. You're taking it over me. I only know the stats. Stat, 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 stat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, stat man Nat over here. Danny Ings is one short of 50 Premier League goals, so let's hope he doesn't clock that 50 is that up. All? Oh, yeah, that's hard, oh isn't it? okay. I, I okay. thought there would be more than that. I mean, when you do think of a striker like Danny Ings, you feel I feel like he's been around for a very long time. So that is quite surprising. But, but he had a lot of injury. I mean, we were spending a lot of time on Southampton. I here, know. Yeah. Way, but <laughs> I think it's important we have to understand the opposition. But he was um, he had his injuries, didn't he? And I think and this is another makeup of Southampton. There's a lot of players who didn't quite make it somewhere else who have ended up at Southampton. And again, adding to that fragility and having been a player who's joined those sort of clubs, it can work for no reason but they can also unfold very, very quickly. I'm with you, David. That's it. We've covered Southampton. We've <laughs> no, talked about them. No. We've given them respect. <laughs> David's tried to be nice, but not quite managed it. We're moving on. Back to City and back to the fans. Of course, another part, as well as our women's team, as well as Lucy Bronze, Kevin De Bruyne, we are super, super proud of our official supporters club. And we like to celebrate the different branches at City Square when we were here live, but now on We're Not Really Here. And today we are celebrating the branch from Edinburgh and I have to tell you I had the pleasure of sitting with the Edinburgh branch at uh, the annual dinner last year and I was born in Edinburgh and I'm telling you they are typical Scots it was a brilliant brilliant night and we can hear from them now Hi guys, uh, my name is Dave Wood I'm chairman of the Edinburgh Man City Supporters Club um, originally from Edinburgh but now living in Berwick upon Tweed uh, me and my friend uh, set up the club, you know, to try and help out like-minded city fans that live in and around and around the Edinburgh area, albeit, you know, we do have people from uh, way outside Edinburgh. Uh, we currently have 83 members, of which 50% are season ticket holders, which I think is absolutely fantastic. 10% of them are probably ex manx as well, uh, who are living in and around the Edinburgh area. So, yeah, I mean, it's great for them because they thought they were all on their own. Now they're all together. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic to be invited on to do this uh, and obviously to eventually receive our, our plaque. Uh, we've only been going t since April 2018 uh, and the progression and the growth has just been phenomenal. Uh, I hope you uh, have a great day today, guys. Uh, great Christmas. Uh, stay safe. And hopefully one day, maybe some of you can maybe venture up towards Edinburgh, uh, meet up with uh, members one day. We had Joe Corrigan last year along with all the trophies and it was an absolutely phenomenal day. So yeah, stay safe guys. Uh, three points today and yeah, we'll catch up at some time, hopefully. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dave. And I've also got to give a shout out to Dave's dad as well, who I affectionately call granddad now, um, because they travel down to every, well, when they could travel down to every home game from the Scottish borders, like so many of our fans that travel so far, a massive shout out to them. And Dave, you know, I'm going to be at your Edinburgh branch meeting as soon as I'm allowed. Yes. It, it, incredible stuff. Traveling all that way, uh, to watch the boys in blue, of course. Uh, now we were hoping and gearing up to having fans back on boxing day, uh, Unfortunately, because of the new rules in place, that won't be happening. But let's just quickly touch on that. We've got today, obviously Southampton. We've got Arsenal midweek, and then we've got Newcastle on Boxing Day. We all know how important fans are. Some places will have fans, I think, at Southampton. They will have 2,000 uh, today. Whereas when you are looking at no fans, Sean, in the stadiums, we're seeing the effect on it. And maybe that's what we can link to clubs like Southampton and other teams doing so well, because maybe they've got that support or they're playing without the pressure of fans. I think that's exactly it. You know, clubs will be able to play without pressure. You know, certainly those clubs that are a bit more under pressure. But Southampton will be really confident right now. So they'll, they'll, they'll welcome fans. They'll want fans to be there. Uh, City at the same time, uh, you know, all the, all the players have sort of gotten used to uh, not having fans and, and one or two clubs who had fans that aren't in the best of form have had a little bit of jeers, have, have had to adapt back to that sort of scenario or that situation. But again, these, you know, these, both these teams will be, uh, you know, able to adapt with, with not having fans. We saw Father Christmas there as well, gearing up to the big day, uh, Santa Claus in, in, in a few days. He's not a Southampton fan, by the way. For those <laughs> I was going to say, if, if Father Christmas comes around with a Southampton thing, I'm blocking the chimney. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I mean, David, for, for you, uh, how do you think you would have fared with no fans? Did you thrive off that pressure of having them there, opposition fans screaming your name, saying things that we can't repeat here on We're Not Really Here, but also home fans, they obviously bring the team up and lift them up when they need it as well. I, th I think all the above. Um, as a player, you, there's, there's obviously the focus on just playing and trying to win games, but to think that you can do that game in, game out is, is ridiculous. There, there's times where you are literally in with the fans. And I, don't, I don't mean that you're not concentrating on the game as well, but you know, whether it's cheers, whether it's cheers. Uh, the one thing I think, and this is the thing with City, uh, when you look at Pep and how intense he is, if you're only exposed to Pep's training and intensity, matches and intensity and home, there is no, no give. And I think for players, it would have been, I say, difficult. It would have been, they would have needed that sort of third element, which is some sort of, a, even if it's abuse from fans, it's kind of like, wow, that's different. Yeah, good. There's, there's, a, there's a bit of a break from it. So uh, maybe now that's why we're seeing City, even with the two draws, defensively better. The lapses aren't there because now they're getting used to it. But fans and this stadium, the Etihad, is the best stadium in the country to allow fans in safely at multiple entrance. I, why they can't allow fans in here, I understand the government rulings, but this is the best suited stadium in the country. I've said this on national radio. <laughs> hopefully it can happen soon, sure. Yeah. yeah, hopefully it can end. But, you know, David's absolutely right. You know, in terms of uh, something different for the players, because they will always hear his voice in training and he'll sort of say, stop. No, I want you in, I want you three yards this way, four yards that way. When they get into a game and when you've got fans, I, certainly my time, I, I, you know, if a manager was doing all that, you'd be gl glad for the fans because <laughs> you couldn't hear them. So be like, I told you, to hold the ball up. Just a polite, that, wave, polite wave, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. All right, you don't hear them, so you could just get on with your game. So whereas here, you could, you could hear the managers. I mean, we, we, we've sat outside sometimes and we'd be like, yep, he's, he's having a go and you could clearly hear, shift, push up do this and so it's a non-stop situation for them so I, I think some some players will certainly welcome fans be like we can't hear you gaffer <laughs> <laughs> oh seeing the pictures there of the fans inside st mary's because there is going to be 2,000 fans that are lucky enough to be watching the game live today it absolutely breaks my heart i can't wait until we're back here watching and a game that i was at watching when i was a much much younger girl um I, you know we're talking a good over 20 years ago now was a game that went down and has always gone down in the history of this club and you only need to say York away to get a wry smile from City fans and now the club is celebrating the fact that it is the anniversary today of York away with a wonderful new documentary. It's all aimed for Cresswell. This is the highly talented youngster member of Premiership clubs are watching. Gets him a good cross. Falls to Conley. The former Stockport player has scored for the Yorkshireman. York City away, December the 19th, 1998. York away will bring a weary smile nowadays to City fans of a certain age. And I, and I know the Man City fans now look back at that, Riley, as the, uh, the worst time in any club's history. And probably rightly so the lowest of the low. It is the moment where we really were at our lowest. It's just another game, Paul. We got to that point, it was just another game. It was another away day of fun. That's what it had become fun. There's that dark humour around that period and there's a fondness and there's a warmth from that time. Um, I think you always, you know, through hardship and adversity, it creates incredible strength and um, it doesn't get any worse than that, especially for a club the size of Manchester City. They talk about the York game being the turning point of the, of the low point and the Wrexham game on Boxing Day was the revival if you want to call it so. Christmas was ruined but the new year was slightly better. And that is coming soon to City Plus. It is a City Plus exclusive. Sean, it's the anniversary today, December the 19th, 1998. The lowest of the low for Manchester City. And you couldn't even get into the starting 11. <laughs> thanks, thanks for reminding me. That, that was a low point day. Oh, my, my memories of, of York. Um, I just have to really give it up for the fans because to to... Go knowing that the the performances we were putting in, um, long journeys, 
bad weather, cold, and we loved it, Sean. Yeah, we loved it. Well, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, but it, you know. What better way to sort of celebrate with a good result today, hopefully. Uh, but those were some days. Uh, York, York, York away. Oh, oh. well, I, I just threw you <laughs> under the bus there with, with saying that. I'm going to do it again because we're going to go from uh, one dodgy performance at York away to another dodgy performance in your rapping skills. All right. Now, there's obviously an incredible uh, initiative that's been happening with Manchester City in the local community, giving out thousands of gifts to children. And uh, Sean, we asked you to get involved in that initiative and that campaign to help wrap some of those uh, yes. presents. You asked to wrap a football here, and that, that's what you went for. Look at that technique. Hey? <laughs> he, he says, keep them tight, get it out wide. Hey? Look, here we go. A little bit of tape on. They didn't, know, they didn't see that coming. You didn't see that coming, did you? I, the thing was, they threw this on me. I walked through the door and they said, you've got to do this in something like uh, three minutes. And I was like, rap a football? I've never rapped a football, but I, I produce like magic. La, la. There you I go. I your detail at the end. You were snipping to snipping, make it look yeah. fancy. There you go. Better quality. No, it was brilliant what the club's doing in terms of putting a smile on a lot of, um, you know, kids' faces, parents' faces in regards to this Christmas. Uh, so, so happy to be a part of it and, 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 you know, rep a few presents. Hopefully there's a child out there from East Manchester now that knows why that they received a present that <laughs> yeah. looks like that. <laughs> David, you, you were going to say something. No, there. I was just going to second uh, what, what Sean was saying there, because that was one of the things I fell in love with at this football club, was the fact they did so much good community work and continuing to do it, which is so important for a football club. It really is, and I can say that. I've benefited from it growing up in Fallowfield. I used to go to Platte Lane all, all the time and I got involved in all of the sessions. And when I heard the news uh, yesterday about the initiative and the campaign that they're doing, and I actually spoke to one of the uh, deputy head teachers at one of the primary schools that's benefited and he's a partnership school. The reaction's been incredible. So to hear that and to hear the good work that they're doing, to hear it firsthand from the, the staff at the school, I just want to say a massive well done to the club, but to the staff, to the players, to everyone that's dug deep, to give time and money and donated it really is incredible and it's doing such amazing stuff in the local community here in manchester yeah. imagine sergio aguero rocks up at your primary school oh my. yeah he did as well he was oh, at a primary school this God. week as well oh. with sean's rap football yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like sergio might have re-wrapped it with, he re with the, with he the amazing it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tidied it up now, another thing that we like to do, another fun part of this show, is we like to do a nice quiz called Name That Blue. Now, I don't want to show off, but on Tuesday night's show, we were all sat on this sofa, um, and we had Andy Morrison and Paul Dickov that said, that's definitely Claudio Rainier. And I was like, oh, I think it might be Gareth Barry. And I was a bit shy, like, because obviously it's Andy Morrison. It might be, I think it might be Gareth Barry. It was Gareth Barry. I'm just saying, no inside info. So we're going to have a little look now. We're going to ask all of our guests to have a little look at this slightly blurry image and see if you can name the blue. Tell us which city play and everybody at home you have a little look as well and send us in your tweets using the hashtag WNRH right who is it Gareth Barry <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually oh. that does look like Gareth Barry okay it can't be Gareth Barry two shows I in a row think... surely oh, no, it is. I think I've got it. Now, we are going to hold our answers until the end of the show, all right? But there's one little bit that I think gave it away. But if you've got it at home, then make sure you do use that hashtag WNRH, all right? We do want you to get involved. We can see just there. If you know who that mystery blue is, tweet in your guess using that hashtag WNRH. Sean, you look excited. You've got don't a smile it. on your face. You think you've got it. Keep it. Don't tell anyone just yet. You don't, no. don't want to spoil it, do, do you? Or do you want to... No, no, I don't want to spoil it. Okay, Obviously, you can have a guess if you want. I, I know who it is. Oh, I you do? It. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm 100. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to make you write this down. I'm going to make you write this down, time stamp it and everything. So so you definitely, you've got it there. You, you humbled yourself a little bit there. You've, that smile's yeah, going yeah, off yeah. your face. Yeah, you don't want to be too, you know, arrogant about it. 
just humble myself. That wasn't arrogant. Uh, yeah, <laughs> coming back down. I'm coming uh, yeah, back yeah. down. <laughs> uh, I think we've all we've all got an idea. But like I said, make sure you do use that hashtag WNRH if you think you know who that mystery blue could be. If you're as confident as Sean, send in a picture of your big smile, your, your <laughs> arrogant smile as well. We, we want to see that one just there, uh, don't we? Right, we're getting closer and closer to the game. Manchester City taking on Southampton at St Mary's. It's going to be fans there. It looks a bit sunnier in uh, down south than it does here. The Santa hats are on as well as the, the masks. And, I mean, gearing up to this performance today, we've talked about the two draws, Sean. Are we going to see some goals? I think we'll see some goals. We've we'll, we'll got, we'll got both teams are uh, confident. Um, I think Southampton, you know, looking at Danny Yings, will be thinking, wanting to put on a good show. But from City's point of view, no recognised striker. But what I will say is there's goals in these players. There's goals in Bernardo Silva, goals in Torres, goals in Sterling. We know there's goals in assists in De Bruyne. Gundogan also pops up with the odd goal. So I see goals, you see goals, don't go nowhere, it's all goals. <laughs> I love Sean Goa so much. He's so much fun to watch the game with as well. He's so optimistic. Right, Sean, optimistic you. Give us a prediction on the score. Yes, I'm going City 2-1. You heard it here. First, 2-1 City. Did I say 2-0 earlier? You, 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 you flipped between because we were talking about it. And David, you gave us a bit of an insight into your, your fantasy team. Yeah. And you weren't happy with 2-1, was you? I'd just settle for 2-1, but I won't be happy. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> well, because it means Carl Walker's got a score. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Carl Walker's happy got... if he scores. <laughs> and who, who have you got in net? Edison. Ed, Ed, oh, okay, so you don't want him to concede, obviously. You don't want yeah. him to, to concede on that hey, one. Hey, listen, the, uh, the, uh, the need of the many outweigh the need of the few, and my fantasy team can... Well, <laughs> I, I can suffer another week, don't worry. Oh, I've forgotten about it. I did it from week one, and I don't think I've changed it. I think I can embarrassingly say I've got, I think I've got like 12 points or yes, something. Yes, I'm, beating, I'm beating you. <laughs> so at least you're beating someone yes. in the world, definitely, uh, right there. So you said 2-1, two, 2-0. Two, two, what are you going for, uh, David? 3-0. Three, 3-0, no. three, I like the confidence right there. I like that. Are you well, he's played feeling... girl and striker, so he, he, he'll be pretty yeah. accurate with it. He knows he it. He understands. Now, he does. He, he knows the game. Was scoring. He <laughs> knows what's happening. I, I, I just say, I just see from the get go, City going for it and just taking come on. They don't have to win five. I like that. Nat, what, what are you going for? Oh, I'd like a clean sheet for David's fantasy team and for us. Um, I'm going to steal Sean's second guess and say two nil. Oh, I'm going to say three-one Manchester City. Sorry Ooh. about the um, sorry about the, the goal conceded, but you know, if if we get three-one, three we'll points, it. that's all that matters, right? The, yeah. the the need of the many outweighs the need of the few, Absolutely. as you said Absolutely. right there. I've got another awful stat for you if you Go want it. it. Um, this is not particularly well. Hopefully, we'll break this one today. So Southampton have scored in their tw in the scored in twelve consecutive top flight matches now, their longest run since two thousand and two. So let's stop that today. Let's stop it, David. All runs come to an end. That is that is very true. I didn't know where that was going there. A bit of a negative ending to it. But I, I, like, I like the positive one to the show. Let's quickly run through the starting lineup once more just before kickoff. We've got Edison, João Cancelo, Ruben Diaz, John Stones, Kyle Walker, Rodrigo, Ilke Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, Raheem Sterling, Bernardo Silva and Ferran Torres. I mean, that, that is some lineup, isn't it, in that? Yes, yes, I'm having that. And I'm also so excited about the fact that we've already mentioned that Sergio Aguero is on the bench as well. Um, so hopefully we might see Sergio coming off the bench. Sean, he's had a lot of injuries lately, obviously, Sergio. Um, how difficult is it to come back when you've had an injury to, and then to get thrown into a game at 60, 70 minutes that we need, we need to win? He can handle it. He can handle it. Sergio Aguero, you know, yes, he's had a, he's had a few injuries. Uh, but I think in-house, they would, they'll be making sure that that he's right. Because a lot of us have been thinking for the first time he was on the bench, okay, we need him on and we need him starting the next game and playing. But again, the, you know, the, the physios, they understand that he just can't be thrown in. He's just got to be at it minutes. Uh, but we, I anticipate him getting some minutes today and I, I anticipate him if he gets one or two chances, we know there's goals in Sergio. So Sergio will be all right. Well, we'll see what happens. All I do know is we'll be back at half time to dissect that first half. So make sure you come back. Make sure you do join us. Manchester City have travelled all the way down to the south coast, taking on Southampton at St. Mary's. Make sure you join us at half time. We'll be back on We're Not Really Here.